Hi, uh, my name is Michael Hollingsby. Um, I've had Border Terriers with my wife Jan for the last 17 years. Um, I'm now the Secretary of the East Anglia Border Terrier Club and I'm also um, a representative for Border Terrier Welfare, which is an organisation that rehomes um, Border Terriers that need a new home. This is Sam, he's our champion dog. He's eight years old. We bred him. We've had great fun with him around the show ring over the years and he's quite a prolific stud dog lots of offspring all around the country. At present I've got five Border Terriers. I'm involved in showing and we're also involved in breeding and we have the occasional litter but we don't do it for a living. We just want to improve the quality of our own dogs and we keep one from the litter. There's an awful lot of difference between them. The various colours involved from tan to dark red and also what they call grizzle. And the grizzle is a dark flecking over the top of the coat the coat is very harsh, so they can survive in the winter. They also have a very a large pelt, and the idea of that is for an animal gets hold of it, it doesn't actually damage the dog, it just damages the coat. The other main colours are blue and tan. They look black initially, but uh, they have a white flecking comes through in the coat. There is also allegedly a colour called Wheaton, although in the 15 years I've been in the breed, I've never seen one yet, and I uh, don't know anybody who has. I think they've sort of died out. Border Terriers are a mixture of other breeds of Terriers. Um, back in the 1800s, we believed Dandy Didmots, Lakeland Terriers and Bedlington Terriers together with others. It was one of the hunt masters of the Border Hunt, which is situated on the borders of England and Scotland. And they were developed to flush out foxes when they went to ground, when the hounds were chasing them. If they went into a hole, it was a Border Terrier's job to get in there and get the fox out again. For that reason, they had to be relatively small, fairly narrow at the front, very supple and able to turn round. And they have to be rather brave to go into a dark hole and face a wild animal. And they've got very, very large teeth for the size of the dog. They were originally called the Cokerdale Terrier, which was, a, I think that's the way it's pronounced, was a village up in the hills where the breed was alleged to have started but definitely connected with the border hunt. Although people think border terrier means the location, it wasn't in fact, it was the border hunt and they were the only people that had one of these dogs originally. They were accepted as a breed by the Kennel Club in 1920. And they have to be fit dogs, they need to run to keep up with the horse and be able to work all day. They also have to mix well with other dogs because it, with the hunt kennels they will actually live with the hounds. The tail length is uh, the actual size of the bred into them, they've never been docked. It's allegedly supposed to be the size of a man's hand so that you can actually grab hold of them and pull them out of a hole if necessary. Some dogs have been known to go to ground to fox and badger and stay down there for days at a time and they've had to dig them out. Although we don't work them in that way anymore, we're trying to keep the standard the same as it was originally developed. They're very happy with humans. They seem to prefer humans perhaps to other animals. They adapt to family life. They lay in front of the fire, quite happy, but again, quite happy to get up and have a charge round. We very rarely get any aggression. They enjoy contact with humans. They really are lap dogs. Very good with children. We've got grandchildren that have been brought up with them and roll around the floor and play with them as good as gold. They seem to appreciate that children are children. We've never had any problems at all, temperament-wise. There can be a difficulty with other animals. Little furry creatures, as far as they're concerned, are a game, and their instinct would be to kill. This can be trained out of them. We find that if somebody's got already got a cat in the house and they have a Border Terrier puppy, the cat will give the Border Terrier a good hiding, and he'll remember that for the rest of his life and treat the cat with respect. There's a problem the other way where you've got an older border terrier and bring a cat into the house. Uh, friends of mine say it can be done, but I've got my doubts. I don't think that you would ever get them to adapt to a furry creature of any sort because their instinct is there. They do have a habit of escaping if they get the chance. So anybody who has one needs a secured garden to make sure they don't jump over the top. And also they have been known to dig underneath, but I've never experienced that. One dog on its own doesn't seem to be noisy and, and they're also a lot more obedient. If they get two or more together they tend to set off at a tangent and we've heard of people who've 
having got the second one have regretted having it because they lead each other astray. A friend of ours had a bitch that had a puppy and she kept the puppy. She used to go out in the fields with it, good as gold, until the puppy went with her and they saw her deer and disappeared over the horizon for 24 hours chasing the deer. They never caught them, but they're quite happy to chase them. They can be trained, but a uh, veterinary surgeon who's got border terriers said they're quick to learn but slow to obey. And I think that just about sums them up. One day they'll do it, and the next day they decide they won't. We don't recommend that they're left for any long period of time. What we recommend they do is put them into a cage when they leave them. They like a confined space. In fact, one of our bitches, she refuses to eat unless she has food in the cage because that's where she's used to and that's her space and she prefers to be there. You never have any trouble feeding border terriers. They will eat for England and if you give them the opportunity, they will eat continually until they burst. I'm sure they would. If they get the chance of getting at the store of dog food, they will eat it up. We always know when they're not well, if they don't eat, there's something wrong if they stop eating. <laughs>
we're one of the few breeds that have no health problems whatsoever. There's nothing that the Kennel Club requires to have tested. The worst problem we have with them with breeding is either undershot or overshot jaws. It doesn't stop them um, eating or living normally, but it obviously doesn't look right. And that's about the only problem we actually get with them. Normally they live for 15, 16, 17 years. Obviously that varies. I have known them to be 19 years of age. They get sometimes a little bit of arthritis as they get older. They get a little bit slower in their movement. But apart from that, they're fine. They don't suffer any ill effects at all. As they get older, they just slow down a little. They do need attention. They do need training. And they do need companionship. They need grooming, feeding, exercising. The same as you would with any other dog. But bear in mind always that we call them essentially a working terrier. And we must remember that that's in their background all, all the time, that they can suddenly change. I think a bored dog, like all breeds, would get into mischief of some sort. I've never known them sort of start chewing or anything like that, but presumably if they didn't get the right stimulation, that's the way they would go. There, there are really no difference between males and females as regards temperament and attitude. I personally prefer dogs. I find that they're just that little bit more loyal and a bit more obedient. They seem as though they want to please you more, but that really is a personal opinion. You know, anybody had a pet, a dog or a bitch, it wouldn't really matter at all. Border Terriers are a wonderful breed. They're very easy to live with and very good health record. And I really wouldn't be without them. Um, I've had a thoroughly lovely time since I got to know this breed 17 years ago. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're the best breed in the world.